Hi, this is Define Thursday for June 4th, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galabond. All right, today on Divine Thursday, we're going to be looking at Detect Poison and Disease. Now, yesterday we looked at a spell that uh, hasn't been around very long. We're going to look today at a spell that has been around for a very, very long time. Um, but it's kind of interesting how it has changed over the editions. So let's go ahead and start with what we have in 5th edition. Detect Poison and Disease is a level 1 spell uh, available to rangers, paladins, druids, and clerics. Lasts for 10 minutes, uh, takes a single action, a cast. Now, it can be cast as a ritual. Um, it emanates 30 feet out from the caster and um, just allows the caster to, to know the presence and locations of poisons poisonous creatures and diseases within 30 feet. Also identify the kind of poison, poisonous creature, or disease in each case. And it can penetrate most barriers, but it's blocked by a foot of stone, foot of com or an inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. So, it's a very useful uh, divination detection spell to see what's out there. Now, the interesting thing about the history of this is that um, there seems to be a hole in the history of D&D &D for the large part of detecting diseases. Um, now, there's always been, going back to the very beginning, ways of treating poisons and treating diseases, but the way that you, <laughs> you know, but uh, by getting to the point of actually um, being able to figure out that something is diseased if they're not showing any signs or they're poisoned if they're not showing any signs, that has been a little bit of a uh, uh, of a of a blind spot in the rules, if you will. However, if you go all the way back to the original rule set, and if you played a druid, now you had to become a ninth level cleric before you could become a first level druid in the original rules of D&D. So um, there was a spell for first level druids called Detect Danger. And it's five feet per level of the caster. It would last an hour and it reveals hazards. Now, um, this, uh, this particular spell will detect poisons and, um, uh, but again, it doesn't necessarily detect diseases, but, and it's very nebulous. It will detect something that's dangerous to the caster, um, when, when they cast it and it will last for an hour. So, uh, kind of interesting, but only five feet per level now, um, uh, well, five feet per level of the caster. Okay, so for me, that says character level. Um, so that means you're a first level druid, so you're a ninth level caster. Um, so your starting off range is 45 feet, and then it just goes up in five foot increments from there. Now, the next time we see anything along these lines is not in 1st edition uh, AD&D, but actually in 2nd edition D&D. Uh, we see uh, Detect Poison. And uh, Range 0, now this is a 1st level, yeah, this is a 1st level pre-spell, is or cleric um, spell in 2nd edition. And uh, it lasts one turn, which is 10 minutes, plus uh, one round per level. And um, the uh, strip enables a, a priest to determine if an object has been poisoned or is poisonous. Uh, one object or five cub cubic foot mass uh, can be checked per round. 
and uh, you have a 5% chance of determining the exact type of poison. And what is uh, interesting is that this is clearly uh, coming from the like test strips of like uh, for testing for hard water or alkaline things or whatnot, where you um, dip this, uh, you know, you you cast the spell and you hold this specially blessed vellum, and the vellum will turn black if there's poison there. So. You know, is kind of interesting. It's almost like uh, a magic, a quasi magic, quasi chemical, uh, <laughs> quasi chemistry uh, uh, ritual there. Okay, uh, then we have in third edition we have detect poison. Now detect poison becomes a cantrip. They they introduce cantrips in third edition. So for clerics and druids and sorcerers and wizards, it was a zero level cantrip. Paladins and rangers could get it, but they had to expend a first level spell slot. And again, you determine whether a um, creature, object, or area has been poisoned or is poisonous. But as we said before, um, it's there's this blind spot about detecting disease. Now you go back through all of these editions, including AD&D, including 4th edition, uh, which doesn't have this either. Uh, there are ways of magically uh, curing poisons, magically healing diseases, and magically addressing it, but there was no way of telling that you know, something was poison or something was uh, disease other than seeing its effects on something after it had been ingested or after, you know, the disease had spread to somebody. So uh, that that's really, uh, that was kind of an interesting thing that was sort of, like I say, a blind spot, if you will, in the rules of D&D. Uh, leading up to 5th edition. And it's kind of nice that they have this spell in there. And they make it something that, uh, you know, you can use to figure out what's going on. All right, well, that is going to do it for our discussion of Detect Poison and Disease and its history in the game. If you like what we're doing here on this channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. You ring that bell. You'll get notified every time new content drops on the channel. We uh, constantly are putting out uh, content every day in the, uh, in the description below. You'll find all the information about how you can follow me on social media and whatnot. Uh, you have any stories out of your games of uh, interesting ways that detect poison and disease has been used? How did you use it as a character? How did one of your players use it if you're a DM? Uh, it would be really interesting to see those in the comments uh, below. So go ahead and let me know uh, how you use that and uh, what's going on there. All right, everybody. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with Lore Friday, and we are going to be continuing our deep dive into the little adventures that make up the entire Princes of the Apocalypse campaign. Okay, everyone, take care. Peace out. Hope you have a uh, lovely evening. Good night.